Well, folks, it is May. That means we only have a few states left to talk about with our application video series. Every year we do these, and this time we're going to do Wyoming for deer and pronghorn because we already did Wyoming elk way back in January. So you know the drill. All this is brought to you by Go Hunt. Go out there if you want to sign up, get all this detail in way, way greater detail than I'm going to provide. Sign up for their insider. Use promo code Randy and they'll give you a $50 gift card in their gear shop. But here's what you really need to know about deer and pronghorn. Everything in this video is deer and pronghorn, okay? We already did moose, goat, sheep, bison, everything else for, for Wyoming. We already did elk. So the last deadline, May 31st, 2022 at 11.59 p.m. Don't wait until the last day. Please don't wait until the last day. That's your chance to apply for the controlled hunts, i.e. limited entry hunts, for Wyoming deer and Wyoming pronghorn. So, here's the things you need to know. There are some upfront costs for Wyoming. You have to send in the entire fee for deer or pronghorn, just like you do for the other species. And they're going to add a $15 application fee on top of that. And then they're going to charge you a 2.5% transaction fee on the whole bundle. So by the time you're done doing all this, like I'm looking at some of the prices for the more expensive ones for, let's say, deer. $677 bucks plus your $15 application fee, that's $692 times 2.5% you're going to be paying about a 15, 12 to $15 transaction fee for each species. So with that, we got to think about how the Wyoming system is set up. It's goofy as all get out. I'm not a big fan of how they split this between special and regular, but that's what they do. And it's very, it, it's the same process in the other video we did on elk. And here's how it works. They take the non-resident pool of tags, and they put 60% of them over here in the lower priced regular draw, and they take 40% of them and they put them over here in the more expensive special draw. So when you're a non-resident, you got to decide right out of the gate, am I going to do the regular draw or am I going to do the special draw? And here's a couple of reasons why it matters. The general premise is that the more expensive it is, the better your draw odds should be. And it usually holds true, but not always. So, the, the other part is just the price difference, right? So, I'm going to give you what the prices are. The deer regular price is $389. The deer special price is $677, so almost $300 more. The antelope regular price for non-residents is $341, and the special price is $629. Again, almost a $300 difference between the regular draw and the special draw. So before you pay that money, make sure and look to see that your draw odds benefit from going in that more expensive pool, because that's not always the case. So you're going to see a couple other weird things when we talk about how many tags that non-residents get. It's really easy for pronghorn. Non-residents get 20% of the limited entry pronghorn tags in the first draw. And there'll be a, we're not going to talk about the second draw of leftover tags. This is all the first draw that's the deadline May 31st. Now deer gets a little bit funkier. Deer has two types of of tag quotas or allocations for non-residents. You'll see all these regions like Region A, Region C, Region G, Region H, and each of them have a hard number like, okay, 400 is the non-resident quota for this region. So Wyoming's idea behind having regions for deer for non-residents is that way all this non-resident hunting pressure doesn't all end up in the same place. It disperses them. So, You'll see different quotas for each deer region. And then in addition to the deer regions, there are deer limited entry tags. 
Now these limited entry tags are the same limited entry units for residents. We get 20% of the tags, residents get 80%. So any limited entry tag, whether it's in the pronghorn draw or the deer draw, 20% are going to non-residents, 80% to residents. So, and then in this, in what I'll call general regions, like region A, C, blah, 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 those are only for non-residents and there's a hard quota on what that number of tags is. No matter how the non-resident tag pool gets allocated, the split, once the allocation, the, the pool has been identified, that split between the regular and the special is the same for every, every one of these. Whether we're talking the limited entry pronghorn, the limited entry deer, or the region deer units. So let's walk through how that works. The, like I said, there is the, the split. 60% goes over to the regular draw, 40 to the special draw. So let's use, let's pick a number like, okay, there's 20 non-resident tags. So there was 100 total, 20% goes to non-resident, so there's 20 tags that's going to go into the non-resident allocation. Well, 60% or 12 of them are going in the regular draw. The other 8 or the other 40% are going in the special draw. So once you decide which path you're going to go, then the draw happens for you. So let's say you decided to go over here into the regular draw. There's 12 tags because 60% of the non-resident allocation came here in the regular draw. All right, they split it even further. Of these 12 tags, 75% of them or nine of them are gonna get allocated based on the hunter or applicant with the highest point total. The other 25% or three of them are just randomly allocated. And here's kind of the sequence of how it works. Everybody goes in here for these nine tags in the preference part of that draw, preference point. Well, only nine people are going to draw. All the other unsuccessful applicants then get thrown over into the random part of the draw for the same hunt code. And some lucky three people, in my, my example here, are going to get a tag. And all the rest of us, you're going to get a notice that says, sorry, you get most of your money back. So that's what they do for every hunt code. They split it to the, to the regular, and then they split it to the special. So in my example here, where 12 went over to the regular, the same thing happens over here with the eight tags that go to the special. 75% of them, or six of them, are going to the people with the highest points. And we're all in that draw, but only the six people at the highest point total are going to get tags then all of us unsuccessful people are going to get thrown over into the random draw in the special pool for the other two tags. And two lucky people are going to get a notification, hey, you're coming to Wyoming hunting, and the rest of us are going to be like, dang, maybe next year. So that's how it works. It's a true preference point system for 75% of the tags in each pool, and a true random system for the other 25% of the tags. So there's always some chance that you might draw in Wyoming just because of this random portion. Now here's some things I want you to think about for Wyoming. We see it especially in elk, but we're seeing it in mule deer and we're even seeing it in pronghorn that there have been people over on the sides buying points forever. And I think this year the maximum points is 16. So there's been 16 years of people just chugging along, buying points, buying points, buying points, and they aren't even in the draw odds that you're looking at. And here's some things that are happening that are causing those high point holders to jump in. And when they jump in, a unit that took, say, nine points last year, a bunch of people with 11 or 12 jumped into that unit, shoom, 
Now this year, it takes 11 or 12. And here's what's contributing to it. One, Wyoming has discussed taking the non-resident allocation from 20% down to 10%. They just did it for moose, goat, sheep, bison, and grizzly bear. They went from 25% to 10%. So there's rumor, whether or not it'll happen, I don't know, that they'll take the non-resident from 20% down to 10%. So people with all these points are saying, oh, if I'm going to get the most value out of my points, I'm going to jump in now. So you got that factor. You also got people who are just at the point where they say, hmm, uh, I may as well go. I, you know, I've got all these points. What am I waiting for? So they got to a point in their life with their schedule, their finances, where it's like, okay, time to go. And so they're jumping in. And then here's the part that really hurts is Wyoming this year is cutting deer and pronghorn tags by another 11,000 tags total. Well, if non-residents get 20% of those, that's 2,200 fewer non-resident antelope or deer tags that are going to be available in the 2022 draw. Part, if you look at this chart, here's the really disappointing part. Back when I first started doing this in Wyoming, they were giving away over 70,000 pronghorn tags. And non-residents were getting 20% of that or 15,000 of them, 14, 15,000. This year, they're gonna barely give away more than 35,000, I believe, or 34,000. So the number of tags that Wyoming is able to issue and sustain the great management that they have is half of what it was 20 years ago. Well, when you have that many fewer tags available and you have more applicants with a ton of points, guess what? The draw odds get tougher and tougher and tougher to the point where a lot of the, the premium deer hunts in Wyoming, you're almost at max points in the preference side. Yeah, you might luck out and pick up one in the in the random draw, but we're just seeing it that way. And it's unfortunate because drought, habitat change, human development, uh, resource exploration are all having a consequence. And we all contribute to that. Every one of us, we need resources. You know, population is growing. It, so... I, I hate to see this, but one thing I do like is that Wyoming is not bashful about adjusting their quotas and their numbers based on what the, the landscape and the herd numbers are telling them. And they should be commended for that, as much as it might hurt my chance of drawing. So some of you will ask, are there any short-term options in Wyoming? And I say, yes, there is for both deer and for pronghorn and it when i say short term i'm talking zero to four years to get this tag so the region deer tags like anything in the eastern half of the state you'll easily draw that sometimes every year or at least every other year so region a region c there's a whole bunch of them there for pronghorn, again, if you have access and you can solve that access riddle in the eastern or central portion of the state, the draw odds in some of those units are 100%. Yeah, <laughs> they are. It's just a function of huge numbers of pronghorn in those areas and the fact that most hunters don't have access. So they look to the what I'll call west central and western part of the state which is primarily public land. Because if you see a map of Wyoming and you start in the east, what you see is just about all private land in the east. And as you get to the middle, it's a mix of public and private. And then when you get to the west, it's primarily public. So the draw odds in the units further west in Wyoming are always much more difficult than the draw odds for units in the east, just because of the the access issues. So two programs you should be aware of in Wyoming that are very helpful for solving that access riddle are their HMA program, which is hunter management areas, 
usually the first or second week of July, you go online and you put your name in the hat. And these are high quality opportunities where private landowners are being paid to allow access for hunting. And there's so much demand, they, they actually have to conduct a secondary draw for people wanting to hunt that HMA. Go do them, they're, they're excellent properties. And that program is funded with mostly voluntary donations. So when you do your application in Wyoming, throw a little bit of money in the pot for their public access program. And then they have the second part of that, which is called walk-in hunting areas, or W-I-H-A, WIHA, some people call it. Those are just as the name implies. You go, you park, and you walk in and hunt. Walk in hunting. And there's a tab on the Wyoming Game and Fish website. I think it's called uh, Private Land, Public Wildlife, something like that. And it's their access program. Really, really good program. Wyoming gets a lot of bang for their buck. So how old do you got to be? You got to be 12 years old. Uh, and youth applicants get a discounted price from what I told you. Uh, hunter education is required for anyone born after January 1st, 1966. Uh, blaze orange or hunter orange, you either need an orange vest that's visible or you need an orange hat. You don't need both, but a lot of people wear both. Some people say, can I just buy a point like all these point buyers? Well, yeah, you can. And that point purchase period usually starts July 1st and runs into September or October. As quick as it opens up in July, I just go buy my points. So here's the thing you need to know. Unlike most states where you get a point just because of the fact that you weren't successful, in Wyoming, you don't automatically get a point. You gotta come back in July, August, September, whenever, and physically buy a point as a separate transaction for each species. So don't forget to buy your point. Uh, can you return a tag in Wyoming? Yes, you surely can, uh, but you won't get your points restored. So uh, you can surrender your license to the department and ask that it be issued to a disabled vet or a person confined to a wheelchair. I think that's a possibility. Um, but Wyoming is not going to give you the options some of the other states do. Is Wyoming worth it? Yes, Wyoming is worth it. If you saw the video I did that kind of put a value, a relative value, and that means the cost relative to the quality or the quality relative to the cost. You'll see that Wyoming ranks very high for me when it comes to pronghorn, it's number one. For elk, it's one or two. And for deer, it's still pretty high. Now, a lot of you are gonna say, yeah, but with the drought, Randy, man, it, it's just, it's really getting bad in Wyoming. And it is. I mean, I was there last year helping a friend with a pronghorn tag. He shot a six and a half year old buck. We could tell it was an older buck because it was running the herd. It was running off all the younger bucks. And body size, I was just really stout. But the drought had stunted its horn growth where in most years you'd be like, hmm, nah, pass. But it's just how it is. It's really hurting the fawn recruitment, both for the mule deer and for the, the pronghorn. They are cranking up the number of white-tailed deer tags this year because they have areas where CWD, chronic wasting disease, is quite endemic, and they're trying to knock down those numbers, so that might be an option for you. So I think Wyoming is a superb value for the traveling hunter, and that's why I apply every year or if it doesn't fit my calendar, I'm at least buying points towards the next year. So just remember, deadline, May 31st, 2022. Don't miss that if you want to apply. They turn it around pretty quick. Sometime in mid-June, we'll have the results. And if you want way more detail, go to Go Hunt, sign up for Insider, use promo code Randy, and they'll give you $50 in their gear shop. And mostly, good luck. I hope you draw your tag this year.